say a developer disagrees with your recommendation for improving a website's user experience, how would you respond? Okay, um, if a developer um, has a contradictory suggestion to um, a design that I'm proposing, um, I think the first thing I would do is understand where that opposition is stemming from. So um, asking a lot more questions to the developer to understand, okay, is this a, te a technical limitation? Um, is this um, maybe based off of history uh, of the product, maybe that I'm not aware of, um, or is it is this just a personal preference, right? Like this design is just not going to work. I think starting there um, will help me then decide what to do next, being able to ask um, very explicit questions and getting to the root of why they're pushing back on the design. And then I think, you know, these moments are very important to to also understand more about how a developer thinks and and what it takes to actually um, develop the designs. Because sometimes um, as designers, I, or as a designer, I can tend to um, inflate what I think is an ideal proposal, but um, a developer can help, you know, bring me back down to earth. So I think it's a good opportunity to learn to speak the language of a um, of a developer in this case, but I mean, uh, for collaboration in general, it's a great opportunity to learn to speak the language of every partner in every other discipline that you're working with. So for a PM or for a developer, um, understanding like the limitations and the ways that they work makes me a better designer in, in these mm -hmm. cases. So I think it's, um, it's really getting into a mindset, you know, where I don't believe it's a personal thing and mm -hmm. it's not a um, an attack on me as a designer on my skills, but really um, starting from the mindset that we're all trying to make the product better um, and then going from there. Um, I think it's also important, you know, when facing that kind of opposition from a developer um, in this case to think about or to remember that as a designer, I have accountability for the mm -hmm. health of the experience of this website. So, um, you know, and despite feeling maybe any kind of inferiority <laughs> in that in that situation, um, I think I can draw confidence from the fact that um, there, are certain, there are certain skills that I have, a certain knowledge that I have as a UX designer that I can communicate clearly and help the developer kind of understand where I'm coming from and why I'm making um, the proposal that I'm making. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of keeping that in mind that I have ownership um, of this area just as much as they have ownership of their area. Um, so being able to choose my language when I'm expressing um, a different opinion, I think is very key, always remaining polite, but being very firm um, about what kind of what boundaries I want to cross with the health of our user experience, because in a way I'm an advocate for the user um, mm. in that in that exact situation, right? Um, and I think one way to strengthen that, um, this part of the conversation, I guess, is partnering with research. So ba basically strengthening my own argument in that case. Mm -hmm and saying, okay, what are what is the existing telemetry uh, of, you know, um, that could potentially highlight the problem that the design is trying to solve? Mm. Um, and if it's there, then that's a great, you know, tool to, to use to for my argument. If it isn't there, then, um, you know, I could then use relevant examples from other products uh, to try and strengthen that, that argument. But user research results really help to um, highlight the suggested solution, right? Mm -hmm. And telemetry helps to highlight the problem. So yeah. I can use that data and almost speak the same language and say, um, especially if it's not a technical limitation, that's the reason for um, the opposition. But I can then say, um, 
you know, as the telemetry is shown, this has been a consistent problem for our users over this amount of time, mm -hmm. or um, we've run research on this solution and on other variants of this uh, design. And we really feel like this is going to be a step in the best direction for our users, right? Mm -hmm. So I can, I can strengthen or buffer my argument with some of those things. Got it. I think okay. I think that uh, on top of that, um, being open to compromise, of course, is is necessary, but really mm -hmm. understanding, okay, if this is a technical limitation, then how can we scope down the solution, you know, to an MVP version of it, you know, that yeah. maybe get things out quicker um, and then make a stand for um, more improvements to happen over time and really mm -hmm. getting uh, an agreement on on that future iteration. Um, I think it, it helps to build like negotiation skills and mm -hmm. um, trust, I guess, between you, me as the designer and uh, the developer in this case. And yeah. then lastly, lastly, I would say, you know, if all of that doesn't work for me, then... I think over my experience, I've learned to rely on my manager in situations like this. So especially if there is no compromise between me and the developer. And mm -hmm. something I've struggled with in my career so far or at some point, but relying on your manager is not a sign of failure. And so when I've done all that I can with telemetry to highlight the problem and research to highlight the solution, and there's still um, a disagreement, Mm -hmm. then that's where I can I can pull in my manager because um he has my back or they have my back. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much, Zoe. I think that was a yeah. well structured breakdown. And so I want to ask you first, what uh what is your feedback for yourself over here? What do you are are there any thoughts that you have about the question and the answer that you gave? Yeah. If I if I think about it I'm, it might be helpful if I actually give an example. So I know the question was um, was phrased quite vaguely, just mm -hmm. recommendations for improving a website. But maybe I could actually set a scene and give a, an example um, and use that to then, like that hypothetical to to structure my, my questions yeah. maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. Or use an example from, like a real real life example as well. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, examples are interesting because I think a lot of times in interviews, people aren't really sure whether to whether they can or can't give an example, sometimes because of intellectual property or just NDAs, if they've worked on something and they're not allowed to talk about it. Um, but I think the alternative that you gave is a good idea that you could just use a real life example, maybe something that you haven't worked on, but you could draw a hypothetical and say, yeah. like, okay, what well, yeah, like what if I was working on YouTube and this is something that we were trying to do? It's tough to come up with those on the spot. Generally speaking, in an interview, someone might give you an example to work yeah, with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if they don't, I think I think the solutions mm -hmm. you came up with were were good. As if you wanted to come up with an example that's a hypothetical, I think that's a good way to go. Um, but yeah, otherwise my feedback for you is that being I can sorry, say that again. I think you got cut oh, off. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say that I see this being a great whiteboarding uh or whiteboard exercise. Uh, yeah as well. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um my feedback for you is I think I really appreciated the structure that you came to the question with. It wasn't something that you explicitly called out, but it was something that was very easy to follow. You started off with here are the reasons that the disagreement could happen. Um and then mm -hmm. For each one, you kind of dove into it to say, well, if this happened, here's the approach. If this happened, here's the approach. And I was going to ask yeah. a follow-up of, um, well, what if none of those work? And I think you you just beat me to that. Um, you kind of preempted that question and you said, well, okay, and then now let's yeah. talk about if none of this works, what's the, what's the last resort that you have to go to? Um, exactly. So I really yeah. appreciated that very easy to follow structure. And I think that's something that a lot of people could benefit from in their interviews is if you are able to take the interviewer with you on a journey and not 
require them to ask you follow-ups. I think that's fantastic. It's okay if they ask you follow-ups. It's not like you've messed up or anything. Um, it's just take yeah. that follow-up integrated back into your framework that you had in your mind and take them on the journey from there. Um, so yeah, I think that was that was very well done. I'm glad to yeah. hear. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, it's great advice that I've been given as well um, before mm -hmm. interviews, especially starting off the question by repeating or starting off the answer by repeating the question. Mm -hmm. It actually helps me then say, okay, this is where I'm starting and then this is how I'm going to structure my answer. So I'm glad yeah. that it resonated. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Zoe. Um, oh, one last question. So yeah. what do you think is the skill set that is being um, that's being looked for when this question is asked? Do you have a sense for that? And what advice would you give people when they're approaching something like this? Yeah, I think this question is what's really being asked is um, how, one, do you understand that as a designer, you're not just creating things on your own? but you're actually working in a, an ecosystem of other partners with other disciplines, so a PM, a developer, a researcher. So I think mm -hmm. um, the question that's being asked is, what's your operation um, experience? And that doesn't necessarily mean work experience, just your ability to collaborate with, with other people. What is that like? And how do you approach tension in that in that moment? Mm -hmm. um, and how do you problem solve collectively? Um, I think that's what's being asked. And then also um, as a designer, when you have an idea of what a solution should be, um, how are you able to maybe take a step back or pivot um, quickly? Uh, you know, I think that's probably also what's being, what's being asked here, those two things. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And it's not always going to be smooth sailing. You're going to need to troubleshoot at some oh, point. No. <laughs> if it is, it's very rare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much, Zoe. It was wonderful having you here with us. Um, and I hope, I'm sure that this is going to be helpful for people watching at home. So good luck with your interviews. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.